Bearing his transit and tripod, Richard Kins is master of all he surveys. He takes note of every hill, rock, and ridge, measuring the lay of the land. And while his eyes are always on the horizon, Richard's feet and his mind are firmly on the ground. I don't know of a surveyor that doesn't stop and pick up something out in the field, whether it's a piece of barbed wire, a, uh, a, uh, ins a glass insulator, or a bottle, or whatever, but we're, that's just the nature. We're always looking on the ground. There's always a little bit of that uh, treasure hunt in the back of your mind when you're out there. When I came through here, I stumbled on this. This has been the biggest thing I've ever found. He made the discovery more than three years ago, and to this day, Richard still cannot believe his eyes. Thousands of broken shards, handles, and cracked rims lay beneath 100 years of leaves, rocks, and dirt. They had withstood a century of wind and rain, like silent testimonials to a history forgotten, until Richard uncovered their significant past. The site is an old pottery site that's over 100 years old that was worked by the, the freed slaves and they were the first black entrepreneurs in Texas and they were the Wilsons and they were brought here by uh, John McCamey Wilson who was a Presbyterian minister and a, a, and a geologist which is kind of an odd mix and not too long, not too many years after that they found out that they were freed so they went to the to John McCamey Wilson, the white Presbyterian minister, and ask him if they could buy him out. Even though the freed slaves had a hard time here in Seguin, uh, pottery-wise, they did real well. In the days before the icebox and electrical frigidaire, families relied on stoneware to keep food and drink fresh. Jars, jugs, pitchers, and pots, the Wilson family made them all. And along the way, they made history, too as the first African-American business in Texas. Well, they had a desire that, to do something on their own and, and not have somebody in control of them. There was good harmony once they started working on their own. They call this place Capote on the banks of Salt Creek. This is where the freedmen lived and worked throwing pots for 30 years. But in 1903, the Wilsons made their last vessel and moved on. They just stopped production and nobody really knows why. Maybe that's part of the attraction that's drawn this surveyor to reconstruct what's left here. It, there's something about it that just, it's magnetic. It's just one gigantic puzzle. So what it is, if I want a piece to match this piece, I just go up and down these rows until I get a similar color or a match, and then I can start piecing them together. This goes here, this goes here. Here's pieces right here. Richard may never find all the answers he's looking for, but one thing for sure, the solution won't be on the surface. Is the whole thing is this beehive kiln here and these little cells was where the pottery was put in and you can see it's green in there and they got their salt glaze from the fire from the fumes i had actually had hoped at one time to rebuild it but once we got it excavated and saw how much deterioration there was and we decided that it can't be restored so we, we were just really going to hold on to what we've got here bottom that's in two pieces. Mm-hmm. Show sure. You can see. Well, I say. Maurice Wilson is one of the few visitors to this site, but his presence is more than a sightseeing trip. You see, Maurice is the grandson of Hiram Wilson, the freed slave who on this very spot made clay pots and Texas history. It really is 
something to see and something to, and I'm so glad that I'm one of the descendants of Grandpa Heim. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I'm his grandchild. It makes me feel good that he, that he paved the way for me as he did. He left us something to, to long and remember, as long as we live. My way of thinking, this is to show you what you can do, what you can make out of a, do with a little and make a big, a big thing out of it. Now they came from slavery, they didn't have nothing. They came out here and started a business here, making these parts. See, well, that's showing us right there, this, this younger generation, including me, that what, if you have a desire to do something, what you can do. See, Cole, they didn't have anything, but they had that drive and that desire to, to make a go out of life. He is the keeper of the kilns, caretaker of history, and for now, his post is manned by a guardian of one. He works tirelessly and alone, always conscious that it was freed slaves who made this pottery, this business, this life on the banks of Salt Creek. Richard Kins knows he walks on hallowed ground here, and in the memory of those who came before him, one day he will solve the puzzle of Wilson Pottery, one piece of history at a time. I would love to see this be into a, like a museum or something like that, since they've gone this far. Something for the people to, to come out and look at it and enjoy. Cause I know I'm enjoying it. I really am. I just ha have this desire to finish this thing and I'm not going to walk away from it until I'm done. I will finish it. Thanks for traveling along with me. It wouldn't be the same without you. I'm Bob Phillips. This is Texas Country Reporter. We'll see you next time. Thanks for hopping in and traveling with us. Now click the subscribe button for more videos like the one you just saw.